Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Blockbuster Inc. So as promised, I'm going to be spending the next year in the game playing through the demo. We only have until the end of December when we get our award season and until then we need to build offices and film sets, hire employees, film and release products, aim to earn awards in the December ceremony, look around and have some fun. So the first steps to a very good production studio begin with actually building our studio. So we're going to open up our build tab here and we are going to start making some stuff. Let's begin with a basic room. Now what I'm going to do is because here if you build right up to this place you can't actually place windows on door on uh, on walls that go along here. So we're going to just come one step in and then we're going to build a little room here that is probably going to be let's go far, uh, four by six. I think that's a decent size and this is going to be our producer's room. So the next step is to put a door on. We're going to make these some nice looking glass doors with big open offices put some windows in we'll go with uh, these good looking windows here we'll put some on either side and this is going to be the I think we'll make this the yeah, top of our building here and then some at the back and then we'll have another building right next to it another office next to it so let's go to our objects and then we will go and click on our producer's office we'll grab a producer's desk we'll rotate it around we'll put it right at the top of the room here that's nice and then we'll put a small cabinet in it here and a larger cabinet right there finishing off with a notice board just on the side here in fact we'll just move that desk into the corner then because we don't have a lot of space and let's have a look at what general things we can add in so there's not a great deal we can put some boxes some pallets a medical bed for some strange reason uh, a water dispenser though I think might be a good idea we'll put that at the back of the room here so that our employees can just go grab some water when they're in the middle of producing and that is a decent start so we can also add in some floor patterns I've got some nice wood tiles here they look pretty cool but also the dark wood tiles have that classic office feel let's get a wall pattern on there as well we'll go with a gray normal wall mm, maybe not looks too much like a bedroom this one with a lower um order but not a top one seems to be a decent shout so we'll go with that excellent right we'll confirm that one so what we can now do is clone this room and everything in it and then add that in next door now, the problem is we have the objects uh, intersecting each other here and that is because of uh <laughs> the uh, windows so if we actually rotate this room here it will then place down and all we then have to do is um, grab the door here and we'll rotate it add it into that entrance there and then we've got some nice extra spaces there we'll also delete these windows and then we can delete all of the room objects and then it loses its assigned status next we go to our objects we'll make a writer's office now the writing desks here I'm gonna put two in and that is because we can have two writers working together in here and then we will add in some more cabinets and stuff just to uh, bulk it out a little bit further two there and then the notice board will go at the back here and we'll also add in some bookshelves a large one there and a small one here if I can actually fit in a water cooler in the corner there that looks really good that's a nice fleshed out room for our writers we are going to change the uh, wood pattern in here as well wood tile looks nice it's pretty similar slightly different color and then we'll put a plain normal wall on here there we go that's our writers room done next we are going to need a canteen a toilet research offices and maintenance now the important thing here our research office so that is what's going to give us an edge going into this demo we'll put a toilet in first and again we'll just uh, build our own custom room here we'll make our toilet a little bit longer so that our staff members have plenty of access oh i didn't want to go that far let's um change the the size there we'll get rid of this one a 
Right, there we go, that's better. We'll put a nice door in, but it's just going to be a, a basic door there. And then our objects, we need to go to toilets. And then add in some stalls. Now we'll have several stalls going down here, facing each other. And then we'll flip them. And add in some more, going all the way down here. Plenty of toilet cubicles in there, because I do plan on having quite a few members of staff working on set here as we expand our film studio so that's nice and then again we'll get our wall patterns in we'll go with some basic tiles and on the floor as well something nice and clean there we go lovely right so the next one is going to be another room and this time it's just going to be a small maintenance cupboard which goes there and then grab a door we'll use this one objects maintenance some lockers going down here and then some mops. That'll do. And then floor patterns. We want just a, a pinkish ceramic, I think. That's that, yeah, that'll do. And then we'll put in some basic vertical wood just to uh, finish that one off. Next, we are going to have to put in our canteen. Now, the canteen could be a good one here. And uh, I'll, what I'll do is, I've just realised, yeah, okay, so we are going on like an L shape at the moment. So, if we can then get a wall here, we'll run this down to this area here. Then all the way along. Close that in. Back to our doors. We'll then add a nice glass door there. And we'll rotate it, and then we have a double door created right in the middle there. Now let's go to objects. We'll put a pool table, so we can have some nice relaxing pool games here then we put a drinks machine in and a snack machine we don't have anything else we can really put in there there's no kind of unlocked um like i don't know like um sofas or chairs or anything but i assume that will come at some point so let's build our canteen up to our walls again and then our canteen is going to come down here and this needs to be quite big Canteen has a lot that can go into it. So we'll put in a door here. Again, we're going to do double doors going into our canteen. Then we go to our objects and we change to canteen. The kitchen is just a nice basic facility that goes in here. Now, if I can get this to run up here and then add in a wall there and another one there that goes all the way along nice and then go back to our canteen and get some kitchen tables that just go in all the way up here just gonna pick that one up and move it because it was a little bit uh not quite right and then again we'll come down here with a couple more just to finish it all off nice now we need a floor for this canteen we're gonna go with some nice uh, clear pattern tiles in the kitchen and then we'll go with some brick pattern tiles in here maybe not so good there but uh, i don't i don't mind that and then white brick wall that's not white but it looks good it looks good it completes our kitchen and then in here we're going to go with some nice brick wall and then on the floor we'll have that dark wood again maybe not brick on the interior i think that's a little bit too much what about horizontal wood oh god garish cyan blue tiles no do we have something like the black brick might be nice oh very very uh stylish yeah we'll go with that and then we'll go brick wall on the outside and what else have we got to put in what's the last room we can add in the research office now i want to do two research offices because i want to hire two researchers when i'm able to so the next one we'll go in here we'll grab this wall and we'll run it along that goes in objects research office a researcher desk will go there with the usual cabinets and stuff in as well. And the door finishes it all off. We could also do some windows, actually. Let's put some windows in. I've realised we've not put windows on a few of our buildings. So let's put some more in.
And these will all add to the prestige of our building. So adding more windows and things in increases your prestige level. One in the bathroom shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll put one. Yeah, all of those rooms are good and that one is fine as well. Now, if we can clone our research room here, we can then add it in further up. And then just for the sake of it, I'm going to add in a little bit of a wall there and another wall here. And then we'll put in some more doors to make a kind of foyer area. Foyer. And that looks pretty good. One final doorway there. And this is just going to be empty. There's nothing in here. So lastly, we want to just add in some finishing touches on our research rooms. We'll go with this. We'll make these exactly the same. So the floor patterns will be this nice wood. We have two research departments. We've got our writer's room. Uh, we'll put this dark wood in here as well. Or maybe the uh, even just white is nice in there. And then we'll go with the black bricks as well then maybe we could put down a nice floor pattern here lovely yeah that's nice there yeah that looks good okay so we have our film studio ready to go just get our wall patterns out and make that all brick cool now we need to hire some staff so that was quite a long uh, intro, I guess. We've we've built everything. The windows don't look amazing, but uh, yeah, happy with that. Now we need to hire some staff. Now, this is the most important part of the whole process. We've got $57,000, pounds, whatever left. We now need to hire some researchers. So this one is pretty good, Miguel Mata. 48 logic. That's decent for a researcher. So we'll hire him. We're going to regenerate. Now, you can regenerate as much as you want. It doesn't cost you anything. And there we have another researcher. So that's two researchers ready to go. What they do is they come in every day and they generate research points. The research points you can then spend in your research tab, unlocking equipment, new productions, facilities and genres and themes. My aim is going to be to build something alien. We want to unlock the alien theme first because we already have action and I want to do an action alien film. We're not going to generate enough research points over the course of the year to be able to do everything we need to. So alien as a theme is good and we will keep action in terms of everything else. Then what we can probably do is look at our mid budget or PG 13 rating and that should unlock some more stuff for us. Equipment is another thing that we can do, but at the moment, it's not too much of a problem. So we need a writer now. And again, we'll move our tab. We'll switch to writer. And if we just regenerate, switch back to writer, we want to keep regenerating this until we get a very good writer. Roland Stanton's pretty good. Creative level of 44 and builds relationships faster with others. So we'll take him. Then we'll just refresh again because we need two writers. So back to our writers again, creative and laid back. That's good. So we have our two writers. We now need a producer. We need a good producer. So let's find someone with good logic, but a decent trait as well. That's not good. So we'll keep regenerating until we get a producer who's going to be worth our time. Mm, I'd rather have higher logic. I know that was a good trait, but we need someone who can really knock it out of the park. That's a shame. That would have been really good, a, perfe a perfectionist and a good producer. So we'll just keep looking until we get something good. Ah, a perfectionist, 60 logic. Caroline Sullivan is our producer. So we have producer, we have writers, we have researchers. We need a crew member. So let's have a look at what crew we can get in. Now, not great technical, but a perfectionist. That's a shame. We'll keep looking. That's 45 in terms of technical, so we're getting better now. 67, but no trait. That's a shame. Let's keep looking. Still going. We 
just keep regenerating. Okay, technical's good. Gregarious is good. We'll hire this crew member. And we also need just a general staff member who can work in the kitchen. We'll also need someone to work in maintenance as well. That's a good staff member. Maintenance next. Also good. And then we can hire some actors. Now, what have we got here? A daredevil. Ooh, okay. This is good. Not the most charismatic, but a very athletic performer. We will bring them in. We also will need a stunt person. We would like to have a stunt person who's athletic as well. So that's something that we need to really look out for. We'll just keep refreshing it until we get someone who's particularly athletic and ideally has a good trait as well. Hmm, Wanda's not too bad, but again, I, I'd like that athletic trait to be a little bit better, so we'll just keep looking. Like, ideally I want 50 with a good trait. Or we'll, we'll take 60 plus without a good trait. Not a negative trait. Just no trait at all. So we just have to keep refreshing this until we get someone good. And uh, hopefully that will come soon because this is a, a long and arduous process. But with it being the demo, we want to make sure that, okay, Kelly Hoover, you are hired. I then know that I can have a few more actors. So we'll regenerate. We'll bring in some more actors that are decent performers. Alexander will be hired, and then one more actor should do us. Oh, uh, okay, Marianne Park's pretty good. We'll bring them on. And lastly, we need a director. Gavin Gates, that's a good director. So if we just go to our employees, you can see here, we have two researchers, we have two writers, we have a producer, a crew member, staff, maintenance, one actor, three actors, a stuntman, and a director. That is everyone we can possibly need for our hire. We're about 20 minutes into the video, so that's pretty good. And uh, we're going really well. What we need to do now, and what I'll do before I finish this video, is we will have a look at our scheduling. So when we go into schedule, we have a work time regime here. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that our people aren't coming in. We want them in at six. We'll give them some food as soon as they get here. Then we will work for four hours. Five hours. We'll do eat, leisure, work for four hours. Then eat, leisure, and work for another four hours. And at six, we're going to have them do a little bit of rest. And then we'll do a final two hours of work before they leave for the day. I think that works. So that's my planned work schedule right now. Gives them plenty of leisure time, plenty of eating time. In fact, we'll get rid of that last bit of leisure time. We'll have them eat in the evening and then they go back for another couple of hours of work. So it ends up being a four, eight, ten hour work day with two, four, five hours in between where they're not doing anything. If they come in at early doors, they'll get their breakfast and then we'll be good to go. So for my first film, it's just going to be a bit of a flop. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to build some sets. Now, before we actually do any of that, I'm going to open up my um, build mode again. We are then going to go to sets. Now, there are some default sets here that you can actually use, but we can go into our set designer and we can make our own sets. We're going to start with something small. The only themes we're going to have at the moment are vampire. So it's going to have to be a vampire based set. If I just uh, exit this a second, actually, and I'll talk a little bit about the actual film design. So you did see some of this in the tutorial. It did guide us through things. Now, annoyingly, when you come out of that set designer, it puts your camera all the way over there and not on your actual set, which is a little bit frustrating. But if we go to product creation now, we can then set our product size our product type, our genre, we only have action and romance at the moment. So I'm gonna go with action. 
the theme will be vampire, the age focus will be parental guidance. We can then choose our producer, choose our director, choose our two writers. You can then play around with these sliders. Now, it's an action film about vampires. We're going to put a little bit more gore in there. Actually, no, we can't. It's a PG, so we can reduce the gore right the way down to like three. Intimacy, we don't need. It's not a romance film, so we can drop the intimacy to about two. Suspense, we might want to put a little bit more into that. Conflict, there's lots of action, so that's good. Atmosphere, we can leave it about five, but story needs to be pretty good, and dialogue also needs to be good. The law, being an action vampire film, we don't need to worry too much about, but I'll try and boost it up to seven, just in case. Next, we go to our actors, and we can select our three actors that are going to be working on this film. We've got one male, two females. Then we can pick our scenes and sets. Now, we don't have any sets yet, but we need to be aware of the fact that we have three sets here and then a stunt set. Now, that's very important and something that threw me when I originally started playing the game. But let's uh, explain a little bit more about that. So, if we go into our set creator in our build mode and then select sets, then set designer. So, we know it's going to be a vampire-based film. We have four potential sets that we can use. Based on the budget that we're going to have, we're going to try and keep them all normal sets and small, but the theme has to be vampires. So, we will go vampire main set is what we're going to title this one. Next up, we can choose the position of our actors. We don't have any animations unlocked yet, so what we can do is we can just uh, have a couple of our actors interacting down here in the corner, and one will come further up the stage. Then, based on where we are, the medieval setting, we'll put a chandelier in, right in the middle there. We will then add in a medieval carpet, and then we will add in a couple of benches here on the sides. And then a little throne at the top, and then some flags. We can put a statue in the corner there, and that looks pretty decent. Prestige is now 69. It costs a bit of money, but it's not too bad. We can actually put another statue here. That boosts the prestige to 71. So it's looking pretty good. We'll add one more. I think we can get another flag in. Yeah. That gets us to 72 prestige. So this main set can be our main point of action in this film. We can also add some vampire themed props here as well, like these candle stands. Now, this might potentially not work given that this was a vampire based film and I've used medieval props that we don't yet have unlocked. So let's just uh, remove the medieval props, actually. that's we'll, we'll bulldoze that. Vampire is our film, so let's put in the door here on this side. Then we will add in a couple of chairs. It's such a shame because that medieval set looks really well fleshed out. Oh, that's a big column. But we can put in some tables and stuff, and this should actually all work out now what you can do if you have the themes and stuff unlocked you would be able to make some adjustments and have a really like fully fleshed out set with different themes combining you could create a nice medieval vampire scene here but we can can we fit this coffin in the coffin will go right in the middle there so we'll have to rotate that carpet a touch i'm going to bring this table right down here and uh, then we can put a couple of candle stands in but the prestige is now 87 which is fantastic and it's cheaper than the medieval one we'll put a couple of candles in on the walls here uh up there we can't really fit one in i think that's good 89 prestige so this is our vampire main set we will save it as vampire main set cool now in the interest of things going wrong, we are now going to exit back to our lot. We'll then put this in. I just go to my build tab here, go to sets, vampire main set. We'll then go here. So this tiny little crypt is now our first set. We'll then go back into our set designer after applying and saving those changes. 
and we will keep this as a small set, but this is going to be a little bit different. So we go back to our vampire. We will have uh, a couple of broken open coffins here. This is a little bit out of bounds, so we can just uh, move that a little bit further into the center of the room. Not working, but uh, that's not good. Might need a bigger set for this. We'll put all three of our actors at the top here. We'll have one looking away and, and these two kind of confronting as if they're looking at something. We'll have the door on this side this time so it looks like it's a continuation of another room uh, with some more coffins here. One there and then a couple of candelabras should just continue to boost the prestige. We'll keep that rug going as well. That looked decent in the last one. Add in a couple more wall candles. These are a little bit finicky and not great at uh, being placed but there we go we got them in that boosts our prestige up to 81 and then we can put in a couple of little chairs on either side here and a small coffee table we put this down stage actually we put that there and then the chairs are we gonna fit them in no it's a shame there's not like a what's it called like a intricate movement tool that would be uh, very useful i think but that gets us to 86 so we'll go um vampire secondary set we'll go save as that's done and then our final set is actually going to be a stunt set now this works a little bit differently but again, just because I've had issues with this being a demo build in the past, I've, I've had a, a couple of different issues and stuff with getting things put down. So again, we'll put our secondary vampire set over here. I want to try and get it lined up well. There we go, that works. And then our final set, we'll go back to our designer. And this will be our stun set. So we're actually going to make the size a little bit bigger. So this medium set is going to allow us to do a lot more it's also going to be a stunt set. So we'll put our door in here once again in our crypt. Now, for some reason, the texture loads a little bit weirdly here. We're not getting what we're hoping for. So the doors are going to be a uh, pretty weird looking. We we'll put that one in. Yeah, it really doesn't fit well, does it? In this uh, larger set. Well, I'll delete that one. I'll see if I can... Uh, yeah, when it when it snaps, it's not snapping particularly well at all, is it? I wonder if we make it a large... Oh, I don't even know if I've unlocked medium-sized sets. So this might not work at all. Let's keep it small. We'll, we'll keep it small. It changes the size of the set. We can bring the rug right down here. Then we can put the door in. That looks a little bit better. Put a table in the corner here. And uh, if I can just get another coffin in as well. Yeah, we can. So we're actually going to remove that. Act well, we can't remove an actor. Can we change it to a stunt? Yes, we can. So we're going to have a, a sword fight happen right on this carpet here. Wait, that's what I haven't done. We changed the set type to stunt. There we go. That removes the actors. And then we'll have our sword fight in the middle there. And then we will go back to vampire to finish dressing the set. So we put a coffin in the corner right there. And then add in a couple more candelabras. And they really boost the prestige. That's actually really good. So we can put a chair in here as well. Just in the corner. Right there. At that desk. I'll then put this little table in the... Oh, we can't put that down either. Table there. Eighty-six prestige. Uh, we'll save this as vampire stunt set 
we go. Right, so we've got all of our vampire sets done. Uh, like I said, there was four sets that we could do, but we're going to use one of them twice, and then we will have our stun set right at the end. So we go back to our build mode, and we build our vampire stun set right here. So that is all of our sets in place. What we can also do is make some upgrades to our camera setup. So right here, we can change from our 1920 camera one to a better camera. So I'm going to do that. It costs a little bit more, but we're going to do that on all of our sets. We can actually have a two camera setup as well. It costs us $1,000 to actually unlock that. But for now, we'll leave that as it is. You can see we've actually lost a little bit of money and uh, the cost to actually do this film is going to be $50,000. Firstly, we'll choose our set. We'll go with the main set to begin with. Then we'll go to the secondary set and then back to the main set before the final confrontation on the stunt set. And you can see we are short of cash, so we are going to have to uh, take out a little bit of a loan, which is fine. Then we'll go to our camera movement. Now, what we want to do is have a little zoom in here. We're going to have the target as Catherine. And then what we can do is we can change the height focus here to zoom in on her face. We'll start it quite far out. And we will have... Yeah, I think that works. So if we try the zoom in... Oh, I've messed it up already. <laughs> right, we want it to zoom in on Catherine. We want the focus height to be quite high up. And and then we will have it loop, not repeat. No, we'll we'll just have it once. Now we don't have any effects unlocked, but if we can then just go back out of this and to here, we get back to our scene here in build mode. We can actually add a smoke machine here. And we'll put one on this set as well. We'll also put one on this set. You can also add some lighting, so I'm going to do that. We're just going to spend quite a bit of money here getting the lighting set up all ready. And then I'll get some microphone setups put in as well. Just the cheapest microphones for now. It is our first film. So then we'll go back to this set. And again, cheap microphone. The main light we'll have on. Yeah, that works. That was on that side. And then on this one, we'll just have the uh, the light on the far side. Microphone there. And that works very well. Now, we can go into our set again. Back to our production here. And we will go back to our scenes. Direct the scene. Practical effects. We'll put a fog in here. We'll have our camera movement pan instead. That works. Then in this scene, we will add in some fog again. We'll have our target will be Marianne Park and we'll have it zoom in on Marianne Park. We'll change the focus height. Change the motion speed to make it a little bit slower. And there we go, that's done. Then back to our main set, where we have, again, just the same actors. There's going to be no smoke here. We're going to pan to each actor. We'll cut to each actor, actually. There we go. And then the final one, this scene is going to include... Now, we had someone who was particularly athletic, I believe. So it's not going to be you. It's not going to be you. I think we need... Well, first of all, we need our stunt, which is Kelly Hoover. Then, I believe, uh, Marianne Park is the one we want. We'll have our fog. And this will be the, uh, the final fight. Let me just double-check that Marianne Park, if we go to our employees here. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it must have been Catherine Blevins. Yes, okay, so Catherine Blevins is going to be the one who performs in that final stunt at the end. 
So we take Marianne out and we put Catherine in. And then that is our fill. So what will happen now is they will come in and they will start making the film. It'll be written, it'll be produced, it'll be directed. And uh, let's 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 just change the speed. All of our actors will start work tomorrow. And once they come in, that'll be it. And uh, we'll see how this film goes. And then next time we come back, once we've done all of this setup, we will start work on our uh, next film, which will hopefully be a lot better than this one. So we've lost all of our money. We have no money left and we are kind of riding on oh hang on a minute i did not create the product now that is a problem because i've gone into another day and nobody has come in so we are gonna have to go to the bank we're gonna have to take out a loan we'll take out a loan of around about 70 we'll take out a hundred thousand dollar loan pay it over 36 installments that'll do and uh, then we will speed things up again. Now, they're coming in, and I've forgotten to do something immediately. We've forgotten to create our product. We're actually also going to change the name of our product. We'll call it um, the... Uh, we'll call it Nosferatus. Not Nosferatu. I'm not trying to recreate a classic here, especially with this. Let's go. So Nosferatus is now being created. Here we go. Right. Hopefully this goes well. Now what we can do is we can go to our filming details here. And if we have a quick look, you can see it's taking a little bit longer to film these scenes, but that's okay. We are losing money though. 55% of our first shot went pretty well. And uh, everyone needs the toilet, which is not amazing. We go into uh, day two and we continue to lose money. So it took quite a while to shoot that and we've run out of cash already. This might not end well for us. Thankfully though, I think we should be okay here. If we just get everybody back and everybody happy, they'll come in, they are refreshed now, they have a bit of leisure time and a bit of food, then they get to work and we bang out that next scene. Then we move into scene three and uh, they're unhappy. No, they're, they're happy. They're getting leisure time, they're getting work, we're getting scene three done, 55% again, if that take went very well. Now what we could do is reshoot here, but we don't have enough money to do so. So these actors are now not getting paid. We're hoping and banking on this film being a success as we move into April. Given that we uh, don't have a lot of money, we are going to have to really work hard to make this work and this movie is going to have to be a success right off the bat. So let's just hope for the best here. Uh, everybody's come in. We're hopefully going to finish filming today. Um, oh no. Let's, uh, let's retake the shots for this director. I've never seen that before, so that's, that's, that's pretty new. And I think we're going to reshoot. We only got 54% of the rating on that shot, so, you know. Uh, people aren't happy, though, and uh, they have no money. We are done. We can finish filming, and we'll release that product. So tomorrow that film's going to release. We're going to see how it goes. We're in April, so we've got about eight months left until award season. It did not go well, and, uh, you know, we've not made a profit. We have gone to rank three, though, so that's pretty good. And... Our research, we now have 152 research points. So we are going to finish by picking up the alien. No, we're not actually. I was going to do alien, but I think I'm going to stick with a the vampire theme. And then we're going to put things into other stuff. Like the visual designer office. We'll get that done. Now that should hopefully unlock a brand new building for us. If we open this tab indoors. The visual design office is unlocked. So we will leave it there. And next episode, we're going to come back and build our visual design office. And hopefully we'll be able to get an SFX design office, which means we can do some post-production to improve the quality of our films. I hope you enjoyed this slightly more in-depth look at Blockbuster Inc. And we will be back for a little bit more of a look at our next episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.